Right, today's session is going to be on different ways of viewing the shapes you have in SketchUp. So we're going to go ahead and make a really simple shape. So let's just put a rectangle there, push, pull, pull it up. And just so you know where we are, I'm going to put another rectangle on this side. I'm going to put a circle on this side. Okay. So now we've got a bit of context, we can see where we are. And if I use the Orbit tool and move around, we can see what's going on. Let's put something on the other side. Let's put, I don't know, yeah, put a point on there. Mm, let's put two circles on top. I mean, right now what I'm doing doesn't actually matter. I'm just doing this so you can always know what side um, of the shape we're looking at. It's pretty distinctive inside. The actual um, shape doesn't matter. So, viewing angles. Now this is very important because it helps you find a way around the model when you're working on it. And also, later on, when we come to look at exporting images for use in reports or posters or magazines or anything you've got, then having some really nice um, camera views does help make a difference. So, obviously we've got the Orbit tool, also middle mouse button holding that down. So that's good, good at just moving around. We've got the Pan tool for left and right up down. We've got the Zoom in and Zoom out, also worked by moving the mouse wheel up and down. And of course the old favourite, um, Zoom to Extent, which is an awesome tool when you are really, really close in like this and you think, oh god, where am I? I'm all lost I'm inside this model. Oh, by the way, what I just did then was use the uh, Orbit tool and went inside the model because these models, rather than solid objects, they're kind of like uh, thin walls. Anyhow, using the zoom out, you do get there. All of this has been covered in previous videos, so this should be pretty familiar to you. If you've come to this video without seeing that material, then go back to own playlist. I think it's video number two, introduction to SketchUp, and you'll see them. Anyhow, let's have a look at some of the camera angles that you can use. Um, if you want to do this in your free time, just make a shape and play around. I said before in previous videos, the best thing to do with SketchUp or any CAD package is play with it. Because the more you play with it, the better you become at intuitively knowing what the software can do. And you can make mistakes for something that looks terrible, but maybe a year down the line you'll think that terrible thing actually would be quite useful now. Anyway, so the, the top here is SketchUp. We have the toolbar, oh, sorry, the menu bar, and we have something called camera. So if you look here, there's a whole load of different things. So we're going to go through and have a look at some of these little tools. First thing, standard. Standard views are great as they're preset views. So top looks at it from the top. So you know, I'm going to take my little guy here, which is um, uh, Mr. Seco, and we're going to, it's like we're looking at him from the top here, so I'm looking down at him, that's the top view. Now, camera standard views bottom, again, we're looking like that, we're looking from the base. Um, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Camera standard views front, again, Oops, we've lost his um, spoon. We're looking at him from the front, okay? Standard views back, we're looking at him from the back. We're looking at an object from the back. Cam standard view left, again, looking at him sorry, from the left, or from the left as it is because it's on camera. And then standard views right. So, if you've got an object, you can look from any straight on view which you choose using that. Now you will notice that there are these little symbols here. These are shortcuts. So I can, my Mac, go uh, Command 2, Command 1, Command 3. On Windows, you'll find different uh, shortcuts. I think it's Control and 1. But if you just pull down the uh, view, you'll see the shortcut there. I personally don't use shortcuts because I can never remember what they are. Maybe if I was to write some uh, crib sheet by the side may be useful, but I just tend to use the orbit tool. So these camera views there, top to right, 
they're useful. Um, they're good to know how to use them, but I don't use them that often. The one I do use a lot, though, is ISO. Now, that stands for isometric projection or isometric view. Depends on how you see it. Or just isometric. And what isometric is, is the 3D angled view. So if we look at um, our guy here, if you see straight on, that's just one view, and straight on, or straight on to the side, that's whatever it is. Isometric projection, though, is at an angle. So rather than then being straight on, you would see him like this, or like this, depending on where the camera is, but it gives you the angle view to see. And we see here that actually is taking this corner. And I'll look at this again. So top, camera, bottom, camera, isometric. Okay? Now, it's just a really useful tool to use because when you export in isometric, there we are. I think, and this one, it takes whichever view you're currently in and makes it isometric. So it gives it that nice even on the corner. So I'll do it again. I've just gone to roughly that corner, camera, isometric, and it just aligns it. If I look at the bottom here, that's roughly there, camera, isometric. So the isometric in this is not one view, it's aligning your current view to fit this nice angle um, corner view. Right? The more you play with it, the more sense it will make. And these kind of things are better just to play around with a no rather than have a dictionary definition. So, standard views. You'll see here we've got next and previous. So, it's just cycling through. You can use these. I never personally do. I find that when I can just use the orbit, get to where I want to get roughly, camera, standard views, ISO, that is good enough for me. And I find it much faster. But you'll find ways which work best for you. So, that's the first section of camera views done. The next section is this part. Now, you don't need to know much about this because it's not that important, but it's just a different angle of view. Now, if you've done any art, you'll know about perspective. So, with perspective, that is like you'd see an object in real life. So we can't really show you in here because it's not a big enough room. But if you think about um, seeing an object like uh, this tablet, if you were to see it this way at the corner and this was large enough, you'd see um, the views sort of tailing off together in some sense. Um, think about train, actually train tracks the best way of thinking about this. If you were to stand on a train line and look at train tracks, you know those train tracks are parallel all the way into the distance, but they do that, they, they converge. So that's a rough idea of perspective. Um, but in short, you don't need to know this. All you need to do is go, the thing called perspective looks like this. If we choose parallel projection, okay, it's a bit more, you know, it loses that, um, what's called the convergence, and everything seems a lot more regular, which can be useful to work on if you like this way. It gives you a different view, so parallel and perspective. That's more sort of converging at a distance point, and that is not converging at a distance. But whichever way is better for you to work with is the best one for you, and when you come to rendering images later on, whichever one looks the way you think looks best. Okay. Last one here, two-point perspective. That's, um, well, it's very similar to parallel projection, but we'll see, there we are. But it, ultimately, you know, that's, that's just a different way of viewing. So play around with these. Um, I keep it in perspective all the time because I kind of like the way it's a, disappears into the distance. Maybe on a complex item, I might choose parallel, but I, because you see, it does that, it, to my eyes it looks a bit strange. It doesn't quite look like a natural object in space, so whatever works best for you. 
We're going to skip match new photo for another day because that's a more advanced tool and we'll get into that another time. So don't worry about that one. Orbit, pan, zoom, field of view, zoom, window extent, to extent. These are basically these commands. So if I've got my cursor selected, um, I can select orbit from there and move around. I can use my middle mouse button and I can zoom around. Or I can just go camera, orbit and zoom around. Or as you see there, control or command B. And you know, that brings up that too. But whichever way. So we've already covered these. Uh, the last part we will recover in a later video. But um, I'm going to show you this now just so you've got a rough idea. And for this, I'm going to create a new item. So file new. And the reason why I create a new one is that it brings in our model here. So we know that is human scale. And I'm going to make something, just drawing a rectangle there. There we go. And I'm going to lock a door in. Let's, let's do that. And let's take that right in there. What else can we do? Let's make things like a proper maze. Um, and what I'm doing here, by the way, is I'm just drawing on the surfaces in the same way I've done in previous videos. Um, there's nothing particularly skillful here. I'm not trying to do it with my measurement. I'm just knocking things through. So let's add another chamber, I think. So let's put another one there. So it's on edge, click, bring it up. On edge, click, made a rectangle. Push pull, and push it in. So there we go, we've got a whole series of rooms, just push this back. So that's going to be an interesting shaped room. You'd, you'd never build anything like this, um, but it's there. So these last two things, position camera, walk, and look around. Okay. These are also in the toolbar here. Position camera, walk, look around. So camera, position camera, you'll see that our cursor turns into a guy with a cross on the bottom. And I'm going to just drop it there. And what it does is it drops the camera down to eye level if someone was standing in that place. So you can alter the height of the camera. I mean, if you look down here, bottom right, it's 168. So if we're designing a adult's um, shop, then that's a good height because 168 is the average height of an adult. If we're designing a kid's shop, we can knock this down to one meter and we go down. So we get that eye level for a kid or maybe uh, a toddler. But we can keep this at 168 and you know, look around. So next thing is walk. This is a really cool tool. Um, it lets you actually walk around the environment. So if you actually I need to show you look around first because right now I'm looking in the wrong place. So click on look around. You can just hold down with the mouse, move the mouse around and that is like turning your head. Okay, so look down, look up, look to the side, look the side. That's all it is. Look around. You don't move anywhere so the feet stay there. And I'm going to put my, there, my gaze there, because that looks about the right place. Now using the walk tool, which you see the bottom left then, I can click and push the mouse forward to walk forward, pull the mouse back to move back, and if I turn the mouse to the left, my body turns. Okay, And if I turn it whilst pushing in a direction, I walk in an arc. So what I'm doing here is very really walking around this small built environment which I've created. I will create another video about this later on, such as how to walk around complex environments, but we've covered pretty much all the things in here, apart from photo matching, which we'll do in a later video. So standard views for going a better view of your item, the perspective, to get a different kind of view. And we've done these basic commands previously and walking around. That, or those are 
all the tools. So a great thing to do now is if I go to zoom extent and I zoom out and I just orbit, have a bit of fun, create something which is about human height, which looks a bit like a maze like this, and have fun looking at the standard views, playing with the perspective, go for other views, orbit around, and go for a walk. Now, these are great things you can play with, and the better you become at using them, the more useful they become as ways of um, ways of uh, modeling. Um, for example, if I was to drop a person in here, okay, yeah, it helps with perspective on when you're actually walking around. And I was to walk forward, okay, and I'm now standing inside one of the areas. I can then now start drawing and creating on that wall. Push that, pull, push, and pull. Okay, and I'll to, to zoom extent to orbit around. So I've now, I did that, but I was able to get into the model and create and draw on the surface. And that's a great way you can use the walk tool. It's a great way you can use perspectives. Um, if I want to work on the bottom of something, camera, and I've used bottom. Anyway, play with this and the, you'll very soon master it. It's a great thing to do for all 3D modeling.